You're listening to The Bible Guys, a podcast where a couple of friends talk about the Bible in fun and practical ways. Hey, Jeff, good morning. Was that a late intro? Uh, did we wait like a second too I long? Think, I think we did. <laughs> it was the mystery. Yeah. Right? Yes. It was just mysterious. People were like, what? What? What's going on? Well, we were sure. Are they there? Where are the Bible guys? <laughs> we're actually talking to. <laughs> we're talking during the roll in, which is a no no. Yes, we should be. We should be, doing be engaged. That. Okay. By the way, I am engaged. You are? This morning. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. Huh? Uh, You're going on a date with your wife tonight. I am. We have date night tonight. We're going to see The Chosen. Oh, nice. Part three release. It's not really part three. It's whatever season we're in. Was it four? I don't know. And it's the third part of season four. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Tons of fun. A lot of fun. Hey, well, today, Jeff Free. Wow. Je- yeah, Jeffrey. Yeah, only my mom calls me Jeffrey, and that's when I'm in trouble. Okay. Well, Jeffrey I, Michael. It just came out. Yep. Um, we're going to start with a game, a segment called Law or Flaw. Oh, those are fun. But this is the Old Testament version. <laughs> Remember when uh, you did the Old Testament yes, version to me? Yes. So Desiree has got some questions for you. Okay. Here, so here, here it is. Is it an Old Testament law, or is it uh, a flaw? A flaw. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Number one. If a thief breaks in at night, the owner has the right to use lethal force it's a law. to defend their home. It's a law. It is a law. Yeah. yeah uh, Exodus 22. That's correct. Okay. Number two. Yep. You're allowed to defend yourself. Number two. You cannot wear clothing made from wool and linen. That's a law. That is a law. That is true. Leviticus 19. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Those, those yeah are, I don't know why. To be fair... Those were two pretty easy ones. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know why you're not allowed to do that back then. But right. you're not, you weren't. I, it had to have been symbolic, right? Something because yeah, blending. God did so many things yeah. that were symbolic. Or it might have been about comfort. It might have been a comfort thing too. You think? But, you think it was practical? Yeah, when, when back then, when you mixed different fabrics, it made those fabrics heavier and they didn't breathe as well. So, so God's like, so it could have been. I hey, want what's best for yeah, you. Yeah, if you go pure cotton, you're going to be more comfortable. Or Thou shalt not be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Thou shalt not be uncomfortable. All right. Well, you know, hey, who knows? Yeah. Number three, homeowners are not allowed to have strangers falling onto their roofs. That's a flaw. <laughs> That's a law. Onto their roofs. Onto. Their roofs. No, it's supposed to be falling off of their roofs. I think that that was a mistake. Oh, you want to look it up? Hurry up, hurry up. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just like Google it. All right. Deuteronomy me... or, you know. The yeah, U- yeah. I'll YouTube. use U version. Yeah, U version. Uh-huh. Deuteronomy 22. It's that Bible app you don't use. Deuteronomy what? <laughs> 22. 22. Verse 8. Verse 8. Yeah. What does it say? Yeah, it's going to be about falling off, I tell you. No, it's When you build a new house, you must build a railing around the edge of its flat roof that you will not be considered guilty of murder if someone falls from the roof. Oh. I, I knew that's what it was. Yeah. So so they build flat roofs, right? Right, right, And right. then they would go up on there and use the flat roof like a living room, like you and I did when we were uh, in the islands. Just yeah, where that week. palmetto bug climbed up and bit, bit my you, neck. Bit you on the neck. <laughs> that's, that's right. But they would use those those flat roofs as because we could go up on the roof, look right yeah. over top of the mangroves and see the ocean yeah. from where we were at. So they would do the same thing because what was up there? When, besides the palmetto bug that bit you, what, what else was, was up there? It was a, a breeze. Oh, yeah, so, sure. Right, right? Sure, so sure, you sure. get up above the town, you go up there. And so they would use their flat roofs like a, um, like a living room. Right. And so you were required by God's law to put a railing around the flat roof so that if somebody fell and died off your roof, you weren't guilty because you put up some prevention. Well, look at yeah. you. So I knew it. So the way she worded it was a flaw. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the only flaw here is you, Desiree. They don't fall onto your roof. They fell off of your roof. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, well, hey, is it possible that somebody can fall off a roof and land on another? <laughs> 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 All right, number four. Yeah, okay. Number four. You should not have in your bag two kinds of weights, a, sm- a large and a small. That's a law. That is a law. Yeah. That is a law. Mm-hmm. Deuteronomy 25. That's correct. And then, finally, last one. A man, and by the way, that means you're four for four. Yeah, and that was a business thing. What they would do is they weighed out gold to pay for things. Mm -hmm. And so crooks would have lighter weights for like like for $100. You'd have the heavy weight for when they paid you. Mm -hmm. So that way, I mean a lightweight, so that when they paid you, they paid you less. Mm -hmm. But then when you paid them, they'd pull out of their bag the weight again, but it'd be a heavier weight. 
And that way, when you paid them on the scale, you had to put more gold on to pay them back. And, and so it, was, it looked like the same it weight. It looked like the same weight, but they were mm-hmm. filling it full of lead or whatever to make it heavier. On the scales of justice. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Wow. That, and so that's that's what that's about. Now, now that one, I had no idea of, yep. of why the two weights. Right. Uh, that totally makes sense. That's why. All right, number five. Here it is. And you're, again, just as a reminder, you're okay. four for four. There's All no right. pressure here, Jeff. All right, no pressure. <laughs> okay, because you're, you're about to get an A+. Plus. <laughs> Or nothing. That's right. What is that? One it's out of five? Nothing? One out of five is a B. B minus. Four out of five. Or one out of five, meaning okay, you miss. Okay, I miss. Yeah, yeah. Miss. I'm not going to miss it, though. Okay, okay, here we go. Uh-huh. A man shall pour oil onto his offering of barley flour. Uh, that's a law. It says it's a flaw. Is it really? It says oh, it's a flaw. Oh, wow. Which, by the way, what a clever thing for, for Desiree yeah, to go yeah. for. Yeah, so offering flaws. barley Oil. But she did four and then one. Yeah. It was a gotcha at the end. Uh huh. A man shall pour oil, oil uh-huh. onto his offering of barley flour. Huh. He's saying, she's saying no way. There, there, there were pouring offerings over top of other things, but she's, I guess not barley flour. She says no way, buddy. I, well, she knows because she's the one who picked it. Of course, I don't know. Can we trust a person who says fall onto a roof instead of off of a roof? <laughs> that was just really? a, hey, you know what? That wasn't a mind thing. That was probably a, 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 a typing keyboard thing. typing thing, mm-hmm. right? That's yeah. what that was. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. All right. Well, I'll take four for five. Hey, wouldn't it be funny if she copied and pasted it from some website and it was actually... The person who did the website's fault? Yeah, or AI. Or AI's fault. Yeah, you can't trust everything that happens on the internet. No, no. Yeah, well, it's true. Anyways. See, we're giving Desiree the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, good job, Desiree. All right, buddy. Well, today we are launching into Jesus being led away to be crucified. Yeah, so we don't have a lot of verses to read today. Right. But uh, this is kind of packed with a lot of interesting things. So from a devotional standpoint, this should be a moving moment because the 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 event itself is heading towards the most significant thing that's ever happened in human history. So right, and uh, and and John is the only one that doesn't um, include this portion of uh, chronological events. Yeah, Mar- Matthew, Mark, and Luke are doing their thing together again. Right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we will read Matthew chapter twenty-seven, Mark fifteen, and Luke twenty-three. In Matthew twenty-seven, it says, "Along the way, they came across a man named Simon." who was from Cyrene, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. All in one verse. There you go. In uh, Mark chapter 15, verse 21, it says, A passerby named Simon, who was from Cyrene, was coming from in from the countryside just then, and the soldiers forced him to carry the cross. Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus. And then in Luke chapter 23, verses 26 through 31, it says, As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming when they will say, Fortunate indeed are the women who are childless, the wombs that have not borne a child and the breasts that have never nursed. People will beg the mountains, fall on us and plead with us, plead with the hills, bury us. For if these things are done when the Green, er, for if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Mm. Wow. So a lot of things. Uh, one, hey, uh, shout out for North Africa, right? Because right. that's where, that's where uh, uh, Simon was from. Right. So that's kind of cool. And uh, uh, do you know where Cy- what country Cyrene was in? Uh, what modern day country? I do not know. But Let's have you ever up. heard, have you ever Billy Graham talk about this? No. Are you kidding me? Uh, no, I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I don't know. I'm not. Uh, Simon of Cyrene. Simon of Cyrene. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at us. We're both on our phones. I know. We're looking stuff up. Oh, Libya. Cyrene is in modern day Libya. Um, so uh, Billy Graham talks about... Uh, the man uh, carrying his cross. Uh, I tell you what, why don't you give me like 20 yeah, seconds, okay. just riff a little bit. So, so riff. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I had other things to say. I don't have to make it up. <laughs> Scoopy doo wop wop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> That's so funny. Scooby doo. Scooby doo. <laughs> um, so, anyways, the, uh, uh, the, the, Tradition or the rule for Romans when they were going to crucify somebody 
is that they would take the cross beam and they would they would make that uh, the person who's going to be crucified carry that through the streets. Right. And uh, it was a, a sign of shame. It's very heavy. It was very difficult to do. And um, then you add to the fact that in Jesus' case, this would not normally be the case, but in Jesus' case, he'd been beat 39 times with what the Bible would describe as a cat of nine tails. Yeah, and, it, and 40 was lethal. 40 was considered lethal. And yeah. so 39 uh, lashings, he's almost beat to death. And then they put this crossbeam on him to walk through the city. It's inconvenient. It's, uh, it's uncomfortable. It's shameful. The crowds are big. Everybody's bumping around on him. And he just couldn't carry it all the way. And so it's in that case that then finally the, uh, the Roman soldiers turn to Simon because they can compel anybody to do anything, right? Just about the Roman soldiers compel Simon to carry this, uh, this thing. So uh, Roman soldiers could compel you to carry a burden for uh, a, a specific distance, the equivalent of like not a mile, but in our minds, you know, like a mile. So you, right. you couldn't go, they couldn't compel you to go more than a mile. Um, and but they could compel you to go. That's one of the reasons why they believe that the uh, Golgotha mm-hmm. was right barely outside the city walls because the distance from where you would have had to walk from Pilate's Palace to any of those places where they would have been crucifying was just inside those limits on distance. So, which, yeah, so they which, stop by the way, that's make the, this African man carry the cross, which is why Jesus said, if anybody forces you to go one mile, go two. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's that lines up. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, so this this scene, by the way, is is very popular. It's just a very quick. I mean, it's just a few seconds. Oh, uh-huh. But I figured, why not play an audio of Billy Graham? Oh, okay. Here because it is extremely inspiring. Okay. And and uh, and and uh, and he says, "Don't you?" Bl-? He starts off by saying, "And don't you black people." forget one thing. And then at first you're like, what, what is he saying? Right. Uh-huh. And then you listen to it and you're like, this is amazing. Okay. All right. So here, let me see if I can get it here. Don't you, and don't you black people ever forget one thing. The man that helped Jesus carry that cross was a black man. Uh-huh. And don't ever forget another thing. Jesus belongs to Africa as much as he does to Europe and Asia. He was born in that part of the world that touches Africa and Asia and Europe. And Jesus was not a white man like me, nor was he as black as some of you. We don't know what the color of his skin, but it must have been a dark color like the people of his day because he was a man like them. Don't ever say it's a white man's religion or a black man's religion. It's a world religion. He belongs to the world. Mm-hmm. And don't you Isn't that, that great? Yeah. Isn't that unbelievably inspiring? I, I have heard that. He preached that in Chicago. Did he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just incredibly inspiring. It's like only Billy Graham can deliver yeah. like a statement. And you're like, that is one of the best statements ever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, th- that is a, always an amazing thing to me that Israel is right there on the edge of the three major global continents. Mm-hmm. Right? And uh, so... The only ones you're missing would be down towards Australia and over in South America. But for right. the mass majority uh, of uh, humanity uh, throughout history, Jesus came from the, the crossroads of those three continents. Right. Right. So anyways, um, the Bible also mentions here only in Mark that Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus, which is kind of an interesting thing. Alexander, that's kind of a cool name. Sure. Uh, you know, Alexander conquered the whole world. Not not that Alexander, but clearly he was named. How, how do you know? Well, because this is substantially <laughs> after Alexander the Great. <laughs> um, but he's probably named after Alexander the Great, right? So that city, Cyrene in um, uh, Libya, was a major city for the Greek Empire and then for the Roman Empire. So it was a trading city uh, right on the coast. So um, that's probably why he got the name Alexander. But can you imagine having your brother have the name of one of the coolest people in history, the conqueror of the world. And then your dad goes, I ran out of names. We're going to call you Rufus. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, but uh, by the way, Rufus is mentioned in uh, Romans. So I think the reason why Mark includes Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus was because we know Alexander and Rufus are famous in the church mm. later on. So in uh, uh, they're mentioned a couple of times, but Rufus specifically is mentioned in uh, Romans 16. Well, it would make sense that the reason why they would be standing by. 
yeah. in, in watching Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Followers of his, uh, you know, pe- believers in Christ. Yeah. Well, they had just come in from the countryside, so I don't know that they were Christians then. Right. They oh. had just come in from the countryside. They're with their dad. Well, perhaps this might have been, if it is the Th- same. This might have been that moment. This might have been that moment. Right. Yeah. Right. Which is so, cool. So they followed, uh, it, it, let's play this out a bit. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, Simon then carries the cross the rest of the way. They find themselves at the location of the crucifixion, which then included uh, the shaking that we're, you know, obviously we're uh-huh. about to read this. All the right? things that are going to come. But in all the, the next things few days. that are going to come in the next few days, but the, but the earthquake and yeah. then. Roman centurion, surely yeah. this is the son of God, all these different things, maybe perhaps standing around, hearing the stories. And uh, yeah, this could definitely be a major conversion so, moment for them. So you got to remember, you know, there was no TV back then. And right. so while it seems gruesome to us, it was a common thing. Executions were public entertainment, mm. right? So here's his, their dad, um, who seems to be perhaps a devout Jew, uh, he's coming to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. He brings his sons. And how important is it to, for us to remember how uh, uh, pivotal different moments are in the lives of our children as we bring them along in our faith? A lot of times, you know, parents will say, oh, I'm going to, you know, not bring my kids to this church thing, or I'm not going to expect them to be a part of what I'm doing. Here, uh, it was expected of a good Jewish dad to bring his uh, Jewish sons, and it was expected of the sons to go along with the dad. It was just an expected thing, and it was in that moment when dad was going for a religious event in his life that he had an encounter with Jesus, and so did his sons. His sons were there, and uh, you know that's my story. My dad came to faith in Christ as a result of a, somebody left a little tract, a little Bible uh, message on a piece of paper in uh, in a restroom at General Motors. And um, over the next couple of weeks, God just convicted my dad. He gave his life to Christ. My dad started taking us to church. And then not long after, I became a follower of Jesus. So I just wonder about that, that in this moment, whatever soldier turns to Simon and says, hey, you carry the cross from here on, um, what an impact that had on his sons, right? Mm-hmm. With this, this encounter with Jesus that Simon had transformed his sons, and then his sons become pivotal uh, leaders in the church to where Paul mentions them. Uh, later on in the church. It's kind of a neat neat, mm. neat, neat moment to see. And it's just one of those little tiny details. It's incidental, but it's just uh, just in passing, it's mentioned. <clears throat> um, so uh, there's a note in the Life Application Study Bible that says, Luke alone mentions the teams of Jewish women while Jesus was being led through the streets to his execution. Mm-hmm. Jesus told them not to weep for him, but for themselves, because he knew in about 40 years, Jerusalem and it, the temple would be destroyed by the Romans. And in verse number 31, where it says, uh, you know, the, the you already read it. It says, for if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Right. Yeah, then it also says right here about that. It says, this proverb is difficult to interpret. Some feel it means that if the innocent Jesus, uh, which is representative of the green tree, suffered at the hands of the Romans, what would happen to the guilty Jews or the dry tree? That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Because when I heard it at face value, I was like, I don't know. What does that that, mean? Yeah, I don't know what that means. Yeah, I've always heard that it's talking about the fact that there was life in Jerusalem while Jesus was there, right? He was the the last life, the last opportunity to step step up to God um, in Jerusalem like this. And when he left, Jerusalem, for the most part, rejected the, 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 the religious system based out of Jerusalem rejected Jesus, right? Mm. So we know that there's an explosion of faith, but the religious system rose up and attacked those Christians, persecuted those Christians. And so it was alive while Jesus was there, and then it was, how much worse is it going to be? If if while all this life is here, if while God's presence on earth is here, the Romans can kill me, how bad is it going to be for you when I leave and this place dries up? Mm-hmm. And of course we know just a few years later, 40 years later, they just the Romans come through and obliterate the city yeah. of Jerusalem. Yeah, 70 right? AD, they tore it right. down, and uh, yeah. only a wall, the foundation of a wall remains. And the, the number of people that were murdered was in the tens of thousands, wow. right? The, it was, uh, I can't remember the exact number, but it was tens of thousands of citizens of Jerusalem were just wiped out by the Romans in that moment. So that's why he's saying after he's gone, the days are coming when they'll say, fortunate indeed are the women who are childless, mm. right? Is because um, the only thing worse than being massacred by a Roman guy, a Roman soldier would be watching your children being massacred. 
Right. That's what Jesus is saying there, right? Mm-hmm. So here he is, and they're weeping for him. Oh, how sad it is that they're killing Jesus. And he said, hey, ladies, it's going to get way worse here. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's what happened there. But uh, what an amazing thing. I mean, it's a sad time, but it's also even in this time, he's heading to his own death, and he has compassion for the people who are crying for him. Right. Right. Uh, and by the way, as a side note, uh, some people um, may think that we planned this perfectly to end at Easter. Oh, right. Um, it, it definitely, we didn't know that was happening. Right. Like we knew that was going to happen. Uh, but when we were looking for a series and, you know, we said, Hey, what, what sort of, you know, theme should we, you know, uh, pursue, right. uh, in the Bible guys, uh, we were just considering all types of themes. And the one that jumped out at us was let's cover the 250 events of Jesus's life, right. which gave us almost 250 episodes. Right. So we've been in this series for like over a year, a long time. Yeah, yeah. a long time, yeah. and and here it is coming to an end, and it's appropriate that it ends right, right at Easter. Right here at Easter, yeah, yeah, it's just crazy. So, well, hey, that is our time, and uh, so hopefully we will continue and pick up, you know, where we left off, and we'll see you then on the Bible Guys.